outro cast. I'll start this off with what sounds like an insult, but it's actually a compliment slash question. Okay. So last night I was at Jones Beach seeing a concert and on the screen said James Taylor and his all-star band. Yeah. So I'm speaking to a star because it's an all-star band. But the Scary Goldings press release calls you a super group. So are you a super group or an all-star band? Uh, are we talking about James now? Or are we talking about um Gary Goldings? Scary Goldings. Ooh, um, well, I don't think we're all stars. You know, Ryan is is getting there. Um, <laughs> That's, I, I, I said I, the same thing before you got on. Yeah, uh, but you know, give him a few years. But I think I think at this point, super group. I think everybody's real super. Mm. Well, super group. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that. So Ryan's perspective here. How did this group all come together? You all have incredible credits. You're all legit, likable people. You're the nice side men, if I could make that distinction. You're not the side men that's going, where's my next gig coming from? You're the side men that go, we can hang. So how did this all come together from your perspective? From my perspective, um, well, Larry and I met many years ago. Um, Larry used to come to my shows when he was he was just a, a kid. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> I, I I um I well I used to go to Larry's shows as a kid and uh and then we we met um you know Larry tell me if the, I don't know that we've ever talked about this but this was this was probably uh the, the way that I remember it is I was on tour and I got an email from you and you had heard uh, a song of mine on like YouTube and you asked me if I wanted to write together. And I remember oh. being very excited that, oh. oh my God, Larry Goldings wants to write with me. And then you came to my grandparents' house where I was living at the time. Right. And you, and you ended up playing on a song of mine called Too Many Songs. And I think oh. that was the first time we hung out. Is that is that how you remember it as well? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I remember I didn't really know you uh Hardly when I was uh, when you were still living with you, you were living with your your grandparents. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's how we that's how we met. And then uh, Larry and I, we did some writing over the years. We wrote a song for Buble that he didn't end up using, but Wolfpeck recorded. And Larry did a bunch of work with Jack and, and Pomplamoose. Um, and then when Jack and I started doing Scary Pockets, we wrote larry in and scary goldings came about when a singer didn't show up for for the session and we had larry there and we just made up a song real quick with larry's organ so, sort of being the lead singer and it was so quick and easy we decided to make a record and then we made four records with different uh guests uh you know each year we had robin ford i think the first year and then um and then let's see Josh. Josh Smith and then oh. and Josh then, Smith, the guitarist who plays with Bonamassa. Exactly. Nice. And then the great John Schofield, the third year, which um, which of course Jack and I had been fans of growing up, and Larry has a long history uh of of playing with John. So it seemed like a natural fit. And then uh and then drums wise, Lewis Cole and I lived together in college. We we've known each other since we were kids. And um, we used to listen to, you know, Larry and Schofield as kids. So it seemed like a natural thing for for Jack and I to drag Lewis uh, into the ring. And uh, and then Mono Neon, we had played. I'd just been a fan of his music. And we had actually done a pocket session with him mm -hmm. where he was just amazing and just like an incredible sideman in addition to having the the most amazing, virtuosic, uh, unique voice on on his instrument so that all just seemed like um a fun juxtaposition to sort of put put all those colors in in a pot and store it stir it up see what happens how, how did lewis cole take it when he knew that there was a song called lewis cole sucks well he named it, he named uh, it. <laughs> so i think he took it quite well well here's a bizarro thing the interview that I just taped before you guys with uh, Eric Sardinus, the 
virtuoso blues guitar player. Josh Smith also came up in that interview too. So that's two interviews in a row where Josh Smith has come up. I don't think anyone could have ever expected that to happen. Now, did you ever ask Josh Smith about him getting called for the David Lee Roth gig and not taking it? Nope, but I will now. <laughs> now, I have to throw that similar question to Larry. Now, Larry, love your playing. Uh, one of the few people who can play jazz yet pop, and they're both convincing. So those are compliments. But did the David Lee Roth gig almost ever come to you? Unfortunately, no. Because to me, that would be a dream. No, 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 it wouldn't. <laughs> um, no. Uh, d uh, never came to me. And I don't think I'd be the right fit uh, for David Lee Roth. Okay, well, either way, uh, how long did it take from Scary Goldings being a name that you went, wouldn't that be funny if that were the name, to actually stick and go, no, that is the name of this this project slash band slash group? Yeah, Ryan did have to sort of convince me um, of that of that concept, of that title. But um, you know what? It, 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 it works, you know? It, it's, it's um, I don't mind it now. It's, I'm, 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 I'm okay with it. There could be a Halloween costume crossover. Yeah. Yeah. We were thinking about doing some Halloween gigs, actually. It would be perfect. Very interesting to hear that. What would be at a Halloween gig? Would it be more covers? Would you do things more in a minor key? Um, Face paint? Those are good. Those are all good ideas. I think costumes, I love, I love a good costume. So I think that's that would be key. Yeah. Okay. So now that I hear all that, and Ryan, you mentioned Wolf Wolfpack uh, did the song that you had written for Buble. I'm hearing horror. Now I get why you're all friends with Mike Viola. Yes. Exactly. Yep. There you go. So, so Ryan, are you a secret horror person, or you're out about your horror fascination? I neither. Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't think about horror much and, um, I'll, you know, I'll watch, I'll watch a horror film if my, if my girlfriend turns it on, but I, I don't seek them out. Ryan's very squeamish. I love this. Yeah. Dynamic. Well, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Larry said that potentially you could do Halloween gigs, but do you know what gigs in general there are, for example, I know that you did a, a European run and a West Coast US tour, but at the same time, you have demanding gigs between Buble, Ben Folds, James Taylor, et cetera. So I can't imagine it's easy to put together a Scary Goldings tour. Um, yeah, I I actually have sort of, um, I'm not really touring with anybody else except for Scary Pockets and Scary Goldings. Uh, oh. Larry Larry's the busy one. Um, Jack's very busy. So um, it is difficult. And then when we get guys like Schofield um, to, to play with us, obviously very difficult to coordinate all of those schedules. So, yeah, we've only done with Schofield. We've done three gigs. We did Paris. We did one in Los Angeles and we did Newport Jazz Festival. And then coming up, we have Monterey Jazz Festival and a few weeks to three weeks, I think. Um, and uh, and so it is that all of the gigs feel like small miracles when they happen. Um, so, so yeah, we don't get to play a, a lot of shows together. What's the set list like for a festival in Europe versus a U.S. date? Because obviously the festivals, they want to hear you improvise and the clubs, sometimes they want you to improvise, but sometimes it's stick to the set list, make sure the four minute songs happen. So is it the totally different shows depending on one, where you are in the world? I can play in three languages, which <laughs> um, goes over great. You know, uh, I I think it's really just the same. And 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 the and the um, cool thing about um, the project, even when we have someone like Schofield with us, is we we still try to keep the the songs at the record length. You know, which is which is sort of pop song length. Uh, which allows us to do something like 15 to 20 songs, you know, and also I think goes over well for young people who are sort of uh, either not used to the nine minute 
you know, uh, jazz, you know, performance uh, per song, or just sort of more used to that that sort of pop song length format. And um, it's a, it's a kind of a cool approach, you know. And we just find the spots where where we where some of us do stretch out. But um, in terms of the repertoire, it, you know, uh, when we have a guest like Sco we 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 try to do all the songs cr across the three or four records that had a second second guitar player right and um but yeah uh it's it's really not different uh depending on but and and, and what what's what was great very encouraging about the west coast tour was uh we could tell people people knew the songs i mean uh, you know people uh, recognized some of the songs and yeah, it's uh, it was really encouraging. We I really hope we do, you know, more live stuff. In a band full of music directors, who's the music director in this group? Jack has a real knack for that, you know. Um, and um, I'm definitely not the director. Uh, you know, once once we get out there more and more, there doesn't there won't be m much more m much of a need for you know. Um, you know direction uh but jack is really good at um you know making sure everybody knows the cues and 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 going over the the structure um of the of the songs he's good and, until it gets to showtime and then he gets a little, <laughs> he gets a little yeah. wrapped up in trying to remember his own parts yeah uh, yeah but, yeah, yeah. But but Jack Jack is so good at leading a group of people. He has just got a ton of energy and excitement, and uh, and especially with where he's positioned in the middle of the stage, he's sort of a natural cue guy. Um, I would assume that running Patreon, you know, teaches you a thing or two about leading people. You'd hope. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so as you mentioned before, Ryan, uh, scary pockets and scary goldings. That's what we're allowed to know that you're working on. Anything else that we're allowed to know? Um, well, uh, let's see. I've I've been producing more, um, which which has been a lot of fun. Uh and uh and then Pockets is sort of evolving and 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 kind of steering more towards originals. So we're actually working on a record with Tony Berg producing of oh. of just originals, uh, which which may have a different name. We sort of don't know what it's going to be yet um so uh so that and and always making working on uh my next solo record and uh and yeah that between all that my my plate feels full you have a lot of projects that are under different names so you're really hard to track at the record store yeah yeah i i, I hear that all the time <laughs> And Larry, uh, you are currently on tour, James Taylor, as we've discussed. Yep. What's going on for you after you wrap with James? Um, let's see. We've got the one gig in Monterey, uh, but uh, end of September, I'm going out with my longtime trio, which is me on organ, Peter Bernstein, guitar, and Bill Stewart. We've been together for over 30 years and um we're doing a tour of the states and um then i'm back in los angeles um where i'm finishing up a, a couple of recording projects of my own i just did a great a really nice duo record with an old friend of mine named john snyder who's a great trumpet player and um we've been recording duo and we're just about to finish putting that together um, and then in November, I'm going out with Steve Gadd band, oh, uh, wow. Europe, um, which I've also been a part of for a number of years, and we've made a few records. Um, and that band consists of uh, a bunch of the James Taylor. That's sort of how it started. Uh, some oh, of the, the James All Taylor. Stars. The All-Stars. Yeah, Michael Landau. Uh, Jimmy Johnson used to be in it. Um, and um walt fowler who's one of the trumpet who's the trumpet player um in the band he goes out with james as well so uh that'll be a little tour of europe um yeah and i'm also trying to do more writing producing um when i'm home once in a while i get attached to a a, a, a film or uh right. not you know 
going after that aggressively but um if something seems sort of close to me in that world i i might you know i, I sort of try to see if 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 i can be involved but um yeah uh and i've oh and i i play with this wonderful tap dancer melinda sullivan and we're starting to do some gigs as well we've got um a few out of town gigs coming up um this year and next year and um she's uh yeah it's just just kind of a duo thing and it's very very unique because she's really unique and um what else that's pretty much what that, i can that's, think that's of. plenty and when you mentioned the film work i did like your work on dealing with idiots the jeff garland film i enjoyed oh, that that was yeah enjoyed. thanks yes since then i did a a, a um a uh, what do they call it now a, a a limited series for netflix uh about uh this woman madam cj walker it was uh who was the first self-made millionaire in 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 the united states and she and she was african-american and her parents were slaves this was um uh, in the early 1900s sure. and that came that came out right at the beginning of the um pandemic um anyway that was that was a very challenging but uh ultimately satisfying experience so we'll see if more of that comes comes my way fingers crossed well my last question for both of you and we'll go with ryan first before i let you go is you like larry are endlessly working on great musical endeavors but what's your number two hobby when you're not dealing with music are you one of the golf people in music I wasn't aware there were, there were golf people in music. I'm going to oh, say there's... one out of two. Wow. Uh, really? Golf people. Yeah. Well, I don't know where they find the time. Um, my number two hobby. Uh, let's see. I, I, I guess maybe exercise. I try to, I try to exercise regularly and, huh. and read. You, you don't look it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I said, I try. Yeah, I I say keep it up, but uh, yoga, calisthenics, hiking. What 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 is on the agenda when you do do that? It's mostly just kind of like weights and cardio in my house. <laughs> hey, the, the the man's got priorities, and and uh, you you have the last word here, Larry. What's your number two hobby when <sighs> not making a trillion albums and on a trillion tours? Hobby, hobby, hobby um i let's see hobbies i i do love f movies um and um i like to read biographies mo mostly um oh gosh i don't know i have you know my kids are 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 well they're not really little anymore but when, when they're around i like to spend some time with them and um i don't know that's about it i love to eat and i love not exercising no mm. i'm trying i'm trying to exercise I'm, I'm swimming now every every morning so anytime you want to come over larry and and kind of pump some iron yeah uh, happy to have you get me yeah. all right let's do it Outro.